Thanks for having me, everyone. Uh, my name is Hanson Hunt. Uh, as Jorge said, I'm the director of marketing for Portfolium. Um, that uh, I wear a lot of hats at Portfolium because we were a startup based here in San Diego, uh, founded five years ago, acquired by Instructure, the makers of Canvas LMS, which several of you use um, earlier this year. So now I am a part of a, a larger organization at Instructure. Um, but I still work on the portfolio team, uh, teaching folks about using e-portfolios, certifying competency, student success, those, all those great things that a lot of us are involved in. So today I want to talk to you about a couple things. One, I want to showcase some of the product on how we showcase our competencies in an e-portfolio and how I'm doing that myself even. And then secondly, go into some of our functionality around outcomes, mastery, and assessment, um, just to give you a glimpse of some of the most recent tools we've developed and what's available out there. Um, I will try to say, I will try to go fast so that way I reserve time for questions. I know a few folks probably have already portfolio questions ready. So let's jump right in though. Portfolio now, because of through the acquisition, is just one piece of a much bigger puzzle, right? We are a part of the learning management platform that is known as Canvas, um, that is, includes the LMS, Canvas Studio, Canvas Catalog, Mastery Connect was another acquisition this year, uh, for formative assessment. So we are just this, one piece of this puzzle, right? The piece that really showcases the student evidence, the piece that bridges from the classroom to the career. Um, so as you're looking at in your, your LMS, you can so start thinking about Canvas uh, as a platform that has a bunch of modular add-ons that you can start use using to really improve your programs and improve your teaching and learning. Uh, so let's jump into the portfolio aspect. Why were we started? Um, you may, some of you may have heard this before, but a lot of the industry is talking about the skills gap. Employers saying college graduates aren't, especially undergrads when they're graduating, don't have the skills that employers are looking for in new hires. Um, and those skills, uh, just like we're being talked about earlier, are the NACE competencies, right? So your critical thinking, communication, teamwork, leadership competencies, that's what employers are looking for in hires. And there's a lot of employers saying colleges aren't preparing students with those skills, or at least no way to see it, visualize it, prove it. Uh, colleges are saying the opposite. They're saying, yeah, we're doing a great job. Uh, so. We are teaching leadership, we are teaching teamwork. Um, you see it in the curriculum talked about today, obviously an MBA program is a little bit more equipped at teaching NACE competencies probably, or just aware of those NACE competencies than some other programs that exist out there. So, um, but colleges are doing a great job with it. They're just not helping the students necessarily uh, reflect on it and have a way to articulate it so employers can understand it. So a student say, you know, learning that competency in one course their sophomore year, if they don't have anything to show for that later when they go to apply for a job, how is that employer gonna understand and see the evidence that they have that competency? So we talk about what we call the skills awareness gap. We say it's not really a skills gap. The colleges are teaching it, the students have it, the students just need a way to expose it, to bring it to the surface. So you've, some of you have seen portfolio before, so you understand how an e-portfolio that's digital, public, portable, you can start showcasing that evidence. I wanna go into a product first of uh, how we certify competencies, like, so leadership, for example. Um, here, I'm showcasing something I just created this week. Um, well, actually, the curriculum was created by our Director of Customer Success a while ago for something that is probably similar to something you've seen before, like a, a Salesforce CRM certification or any marketing automation technology certifications where you're learning the technology and you're getting a certification for that platform. Um, so we wanted to create one for portfolio, right? There's a few different tools you can get certified in. One is the ePortfolio tool itself. And so I wanted to myself go through that curriculum and get certified. Um, so this is what it looks like in the back end to manage a pathway and certification program. This is the evidence um, I submitted. I actually presented at another conference on um, showing what you know. You'll see some of these slides actually still in this deck today um, in an e-portfolio and helping Canvas customers start getting the value out of e-portfolio for their students. And it's this certification, the goal is to teach teachers how to communicate, um, how to get value out of e-portfolio to their students. So it's not just for students, the certification is really for educators who are, who are teaching their students how to use it. Yeah. I will, I will repeat the question if, if the mic's not there, but the question was, does this only work with Canvas? Um, what I'm showing right now is a modular tool that can be integrated through LTI with any major LMS, but it also, also could be used standalone. So actually, I didn't use any LMS in this process here. Um, this rubric you see on the right is, uh, can be completely customizable in the rubric library. I will show you in a little bit how to create a rubric, um, but you don't have to have an LMS with this. 
If you do, um, you can integrate it and pass that data directly into the ePortfolio from the LMS. The uh, pathway that you see, or the digital badge here, that once I submitted that evidence and it got assessed by that rubric, um, now this lives, this credential lives in my ePortfolio. Now, anyone that is hiring for an ePortfolio position, or they need to know that someone has those skill sets, um, I can send them this credential with the evidence attached to it, with the information about the issuer, the institution, the skills, the skills associated to it, um, and how I earned it. And the, obviously the most valuable piece, or at least in our mind, is that evidence, right? That's what validates that competency, especially in the eye of the employer, who is saying, do they really have well, here e-portfolio skills or leadership competencies? Instead of just a resume that says the word leadership, now they can click it and they can see directly into the artifact, the evidence itself of how they showcase that, that competency. Here's my e-portfolio. You can go to portfolio.com slash Hansen, H-A-N-S-E-N -E with an E. Um, check out my e-portfolio. You see that I just submitted that evidence. I got that certification. It automatically deposited both in two places on my portfolio. One, my, my list of digital credentials that I have, and two, right in the portfolio of all the evidence of all my learning. So now anyone publicly can go access it and see it. Uh, you also see I have some other uh, inbound marketing related artifacts up there on that screen. Uh, that is because I lead a nonprofit here in San Diego teaching inbound marketing. So um, I not only teach it, um, I'm building mastery certifications for it, but I'm also a student of it and I want to earn the certifications myself. Uh, so you see that in my ePortfolio and that's how I got the job at Portfolium was showcasing my case studies from inbound marketing work I've done in my career. Now let's just jump into a few student examples. We have um, an actually an Ashford Forbes School of Business student. Um, who has artifacts in her e-portfolio about uh, showcasing leadership as a competency. Um, this is just a, a quick snapshot of e a different, various e-portfolios showcasing different skills and competencies so you can get an idea of how it can be used. This is uh, Lauren Schlesselman, um, UConn faculty, who was in the pharmacy school and um, she wanted to move into the Center for Teaching and Learning. So she started doing a lot of professional development work and workshops which we actually run some, especially around uh, the, using technology to support student success. And so she actually did our Student Success Ambassador uh, program and earned that credential. And here's all the great, beautiful evidence you have. She actually did a lot of work towards this credential, um, and she has since moved into that Center for Teaching and Learning. Kevin Lai, so a K-12 example, but I wanted to include it because it's a hard skill. Um, so. We're talking a lot about ACE competency and soft skills, but it's also important to be certifying those, the mastery in those hard skills. One of those things that's lo being uh, measured locally here and certified locally in San Diego is uh, biotech related skills, big biotech industry here in San Diego. And one of those skills students need to have when they graduate or want to get a job at a biotech um, company is micro pipetting. Um, so they do performance based assessments of that specific hard skill. There's a video uploaded. You can watch a video of a student doing micro pipetting in the, in the lab, and you can award that badge based on the rubric criteria on the right. That automatically helps one go to the show the employer that they can do micro pipetting, but it also helps that student along a pathway towards uh, college credit at local community colleges here in San Diego. Um, and then that, of course, that video evidence and that digital credential now lives in Kevin's ePortfolio where he can take that with him, whether he goes to a community college or four year graduates college, goes into the workforce, he never loses this e-portfolio or that evidence. He owns this free for life for students. They never lose their e-portfolio. Now this really, uh, I want to sum up kind of what I'm show showing and talking about here. We talk about this student success platform or scaling student success. It's not just an e-portfolio. This is your Forbes School of Business or the Ashford University uh, program having a community page where students can see the brand and the network and all the other artifacts from other students and connect with their peers in a social way like they're used to on Facebook and LinkedIn. It's not just a tool that lives inside an LMS that gets lost in the LMS when they leave that school or program. Um, this is something engaging students love connecting with each other and getting inspiration. It's pathways, keeping them engaged up towards a credential, towards competency, towards completion of a program like an MBA program or uh, um, a simulation experience. Uh, e-portfolios like I was just showing, showcasing what you know in that public facing portable e-portfolio, um, including those credentials, those digital badges. Assessment, I'm gonna jump into an outcomes assessment tool next, so I'll, I'll touch on that in a second, but how do we validate to those competencies, what they're learning in the classroom? 
Um, we need to make sure that we have someone doing the assessment work. Career readiness, ultimately saying, hey, I've got an e-portfolio with, here's all my skills, here's all my artifacts, and now I can go send that to an employer and connect directly with employers on a platform, or at least have it accessible for someone to just go browse and see if I am sending in a paper resume and, link, and have a URL back to my e-portfolio. Now let's talk a little bit about assessment. The e-portfolio product was what we started with five years ago as a company because e-portfolios were um, not student friendly, not student centered, and no students were using them. So we created an e-portfolio that was more like LinkedIn for students. And then we realized, okay, we need, to, we need to give schools and faculty a way to validate those competencies that students are saying they have on the e-portfolio. It's like, great, you added a project and you tagged a skill, but how's an employer gonna trust that, uh, that artifact, that skill that says you have leadership competencies? The employer wants to know there's some validity behind it. So what better way to connect that with the assessment process and your learning management systems? I'm gonna go into a step-by-step -step process here. Um, I don't know, I wanna go into too much details, but I just wanna give you a glimpse of the product. Uh, so feel free to ask me questions afterwards, especially if it's assessment, more um, product focused questions, we can, we can jump into the product later. Uh, but let's start with creating a learning outcome in portfolio, right? You, you have your learning outcomes already uh, probably mapped to your curriculum, your coursework, your co-curricular experiences, internship programs. Um, so let's put in your learning outcomes into the, the uh, outcomes library. And then, um, sorry, my screens are so small back there, I can't actually see it anymore. And let's define it and let's associate it to a course or a program that you guys are teaching. Um, you can associate to multiple courses or multiple programs. And then once you have those learning outcomes in there, um, you can say what is the criteria for uh, meeting that achievement level, um, partially met, met, exceeded. You can fully customize that information. Uh, based on your own um, rubrics and criteria. And then, okay, now we've got it built. We've got the learning outcome, and we can see we've done a few, we've done a couple assessments already in different places, maybe different courses um, where this learning outcome is being used or, te or taught. Um, and so we can see how that progress is for that specific learning outcome across courses and programs and pathways. Uh, let's, uh, this is just jumping into the courses tab. If you had one learning outcome but being taught across 20, 30 different courses, you would see that summary here and break it down by course. You have your full, uh, um, all your full outcomes library available to you. Um, and then ultimately, you can start building out your rubrics of how you're going to assess those learning outcomes and those assignments, so that's capstone projects. Um, creating a rubric, super easy in portfolio. Most faculty figure it out pretty quickly. Um, a very user-friendly interface, but you know, we built this product for students in the first place, so it was always user-friendly to begin with, which means it translated to being very easy to use for faculty as well, um, easy to learn, but happy to certify you in the product if you want to go through a PD program too. Uh, inputting all your criteria. I've staged some data here. Um, I, don't, uh, I haven't mastered a IACBE accreditation, but I, I did just find your learning outcomes online and wanted to input it so that way we can use some more contextual and uh, relatable information in this demonstration. Um, but you can put your learning outcomes attached to the rubric and the individual criterion. So that way when you go assess an assignment, it's automatically gonna be populating a learning outcomes report with all the criterion uh, level detail in that report, which I'll show you a screenshot in a second. Here's your rubric preview to check, your, check out your work or be able to share that externally or including share it with the students to be transparent about how you're, how you're assessing them. And then setting up your program assessment. So you've got your learning outcome, you've got your rubrics, and now you, now you wanna see how your program's doing or you wanna build an accreditation report um, and, and attach those learning outcomes to accreditation report. Let's, build, let's assign our reviewers, uh, bring in your faculty or your assessors or your uh, subject matter experts, external reviewers, your corporate partners, um, and then select those artifacts, bring them in from your courses, your LMS, wherever you, or a CSV file, PDF, wherever you have those artifacts living. And then you go through the act of doing an assessment. You saw originally in one of my screenshots about assessing um, my piece of work around ePortfolio Ambassador, and the rubric on the right was an AAC and U value rubric I was using. This is now um, more related to IACBE, learning outcomes and rubric and criteria and assignment, but um, very customizable, but it's the ease of use is that one screen view right here. You've got your artifact on the left, you're just student reflection description underneath it. You've got your rubric on the right. 
Um, no matter how big or small that rubric, it just scrolls. And then you submit that score. And once your faculty submit score on one artifact or on all of them, it is in real time populating a learning outcomes report and a rubric criterion report. So this is what it looks like at the report level, the outcomes level. Um, you can report on at the course level, individual course, or the student level, or the program overall. So if you have a cohort of students, or the program, or the MBA program, um, you can report at that level for, for however, whatever your needs are. Uh, it's very customizable. And then uh, if, you if you clicked into one of those outcomes, this is, uh, if you scroll down here, you see all, all the individual criteria in your rubric broken down in the report. And you could export that out as a PDF or a CSV to manipulate that data. Now, I hopefully still have a couple minutes for questions. I don't know what our time frame is, but um, I will jump back to a screen that, um, you know, this hard skill that we showed from Competency X, this really sums up the value of using portfolio and an e-portfolio tied to your LMS or to a course assignment or to a rubric. Because now you've got your learning outcomes mapped and you've said, we want to certify these competencies and give students this to take with them. So where are we gonna do that in the curriculum? Okay, this course, this assignment. And now we can award a badge or a credential at that stage, right when that faculty member submits a score. They don't have to go out of the LMS. You can do it out of the LMS if you want to, but they can be right in Canvas, Moodle, Blackboard. And then they click submit score or grade that assignment. That triggers a badge, an open badge from Badger. It goes into an e-portfolio attached to that artifact that evidence with any skills, learning outcomes, which is now uh, available to that student to use, take with them, portable for life, free for life, and searchable by employers and accessible by employers. Yeah. I want to make sure that I phrase Sorry, the question. Uh, yeah. Correctly. Is there a way to, if we use portfolio as a standalone? Yeah. Because we don't have Yep. Is there a way to upload grades from either Excel or Blackboard onto portfolio so, and courses so that we don't have to do a whole lot of double entry in order to then get aggregation that you've shown us, which is really cool, by the way. Yeah, that's through an LTI integration. We, we have an integration with all major learning management systems, um, not just Canvas. And so you just set up, um, you said you're on Blackboard. So you set up the LTI, and then each individual course in Blackboard, you just have to turn on the LTI in Blackboard. So that way it starts passing that gradebook data back and forth. So if you want to do a course assessment in Portfolio, um, and you've connected that course, it'll pass that data back to the gradebook. If you want to have a pathway, like you're seeing here in this micro pipetting one or the ePortfolio Ambassador pathway I was on, one of those requirements on that pathway could be a course assignment. So you can have multiple different courses and different assignments along one pathway to earn a mastery, uh, competency mastery certification. And those, when you do that assessment in the pathway, that action can send data back to the gradebook as long as you've set up that LTI. So I'm assuming that this application can occur not just at the course level, but at the school level and then at the university level. Yeah, and that's actually the, the really exciting part. Um, that's some of the screenshots I was showing you is just getting into the customer's hands this week. Uh, we've had our outcomes assessment product for two years, but now you're gonna have curriculum mapping and outcomes reporting at each, at each stage and at each level. So student, course, program, institution level, um, cohort based. So it's gonna get a lot more flexible for the reporting on the reporting side. Yep. The question was about connecting with D2L. Yes, it does connect with D2L, Moodle, Sakai, Blackboard. I'm sure I'm missing some, but yeah, all, any major LMS that has uh, an LTI integration we've, we've set up. So ePortfolio itself, like student actually adding an artifact to their ePortfolio is free for life for the student. ePortfolio e management tool, which is where you're getting your um, faculty admin access, reporting on skills and jobs, uh, connecting with careers and, and the social engagements they're taking on the ePortfolio. That is, that is price per student. Usually that's something that institutions are buying for their entire student body um, so they can track skills across the whole student population. Um, and then we have a per student license for outcomes assessment and pathways. So um, you got, it's customizable to the institution, right? We have some schools with 100 students that's 
the pricing is very flexible for them versus 100,000 students like FIU. Um, so depends on your needs for sure and your program needs, but we'll, we'll work with you.